Okay, let's unpack this. For years, the main idea in AI has kind of been bigger is better, right? <sighs> Scaling laws. Absolutely. Right. Trillions of parameters, massive compute. Yeah, that's been the dominant philosophy. But you've shared some sources that, well, they poke holes in that. There's this really fascinating vulnerability showing up. That's it exactly. Why do these giant, you know, state-of-the-art LLMs, your Geminis, your Deep Seeks, why do they still kind of choke on classic reasoning puzzles? Yeah, surprising. I mean, things like uh, a tough Sudoku or those geometric puzzles in RCAGI, that benchmark's been around six years, and the big guys are nowhere near human level. That's the real head scratcher we're diving into today. And when these huge LLMs do make progress on reasoning. Let me guess, it's complicated. Uh huh. It relies on really expensive, often brittle methods like chain of thought, CoT. Right, CoT, and lots of test time compute, TTC. Exactly, heavy TTC. Basically, they have to run the model over and over, almost searching for an answer. So it's not really learning to reason better, it's more like brute forcing it at test time. You got it. It doesn't generalize well, especially for hard problems where. You know, you don't have tons of training data. Okay, so what's the alternative? You mentioned a different direction, a kind of radical shift. Recursive reasoning. That's the path. Moving away from just sheer size towards, let's say, a more intelligent process. Iterative. And which models are we looking at today that really show this shift? We're focusing on two main ones. First, there's the hierarchical reasoning model, HRM. That was the complex predecessor, the first proof of concept. Really. Okay, HRM complex one. And second, the tiny recursive model, or TRM, which is, well, a radical simplification of HRM. Much, much simpler. Got it. So the mission for this deep dive is to figure out how TRM pulls this off. How does less is more actually beat models thousands of times bigger? Yeah, we want to understand why the process, the iterative reasoning seems to matter more than just raw capacity, at least for these tasks. And you mentioned a shocking statistic to kick things off. Yeah. Get this. TRM uses only 7 million parameters. 7 million, that's tiny. Tiny, yet it hits 45% accuracy on ARC AGI-1, and importantly, 8% on the newer, much harder ARC AGI-2 benchmark. Okay, wait, how does that compare to the giants, like Gemini? Well, Gemini 2.5 Pro, a massive model, only gets about 4.9% on ARC AGI-2. Wow, so TRM is getting significantly better results with, what, a tiny fraction of the parameters. Less than 0.01% of the parameters, likely. It's not just efficient, it kind of turns the whole scaling idea on its head for these oh. problems. Okay, let's start where the complexity began then, with HRM, the hierarchical reasoning model. Mm. You said it was novel, but maybe overly engineered, based on brain science. Yeah, it was definitely novel, but intricate. It had two core innovations. First was this recursive hierarchical reasoning. Hierarchical. It used two separate small networks. They called them a file loaders. And one ran at high frequency for details, the other low frequency for the big picture. And the justification was biological, like brain waves or something. Pretty much. Wow. Analogies to different temporal processing speeds in the brain. It sounds smart, but maybe overly complex for the task. Right. Academic brilliance versus practical engineering, maybe? Could be. But the second idea, deep supervision, that was really clever. Deep supervision, what's that? Instead of just spitting out one final answer, the model refines its prediction over multiple steps, up to 16 steps. Ah, so it iterates. Yeah. It improves its own answer. Exactly. And crucially, it reuses its own internal state, its latent features, as the starting point for the next refinement step. So it's like writing a draft, then revising it, then revising the revision. Perfect analogy. Yeah. And technically, by doing this, it mimics the effect of very deep networks, like ResNets. They call it effective depth. Effective depth. How deep are we talking? Even though the actual networks were shallow, maybe four layers each, the recursion gave it an effective depth of up to 384 layers. Whoa, okay, that's deep, without actually having 384 layers of parameter. Precisely. It's using compute over time to simulate depth, but this complexity came with baggage, mathematical baggage. Ah, the catch, what was the issue? Well, training this recursive beast was hard. To make it tractable, HRM relied heavily on some, let's say, ambitious math, concepts around fixed point recursion. Fixed points, like finding a stable state? Sort of, and they used something called the implicit function theorem, IFT, as a kind of shortcut. The shortcut for? For calculating the gradients during training. Remember, gradients are how the model learns. IFT let them approximate the gradient using only the last couple of recursion steps, even if there were six steps total. Saved a lot of compute. Okay, but shortcuts often rely on assumptions. Right. 
Exactly. The big assumption was that the model's internal state would actually converge neatly to a mathematical fixed point. And did it. Well, later analysis suggested, probably not, not reliably during training anyway. So the mathematical foundation for the shortcut was a bit shaky. Uh-oh. Applying fancy math where the conditions aren't actually met? That sounds risky. It is. And there's another thing. Adaptive computational time, or ACT. ACT, what was that for? It was meant to save compute time during inference, during the test. The idea was the model could decide to stop reasoning early if it felt confident. Okay, sounds reasonable, adaptive. But the way they trained ACT was complicated. It actually required two full forward passes through the model for every single training step. Wait, two forward passes just to train the time-saving part? That doesn't sound very efficient overall. Right. It was doubling the training cost up front to potentially save time later kind of self-defeating. Brilliant ideas, like deep supervision, but tangled up in complex hierarchies, shaky math assumptions, and hidden inefficiencies. That's a good summary. And the key insight that led to the next step came from independent analysis. What did that show? It showed that the deep supervision, that iterative refinement process, was doing most of the heavy lifting. It nearly doubled the accuracy on its own. From what to what? Like from maybe 19% accuracy up to 39% just by adding deep supervision. Um, and the fancy hierarchical part, the two networks, the brain analogy. That only gave a small bump, maybe from 35% or 36% up to that final 39%. Marginal gains for a lot of complexity. So the takeaway was the core iterative process is gold but the complex biological scaffolding around it. Maybe not so much. Exactly. The refinement cycle was the key. The hierarchy. Mostly unnecessary complexity. Wait, so they built this intricate thing based on, like, brain ideas, and the brain-inspired bits were the least useful parts. Mm. Pretty much. Which is why the next step was TRM. They asked, what if we just keep the good part, the iterative refinement, and ditch everything else? Okay, let's pivot then. To the tiny recursive model, TRM. How do they strip away the complexity, ditch the shaky math, and still end up with something better? Radical simplification was the name of the game. Remember, HRM had two four-layer networks, about 27 million parameters total. Yeah. TRM uses a single network, and get this, only two layers. Two layers, that's it. How many parameters? Down to just 7 million, a huge cut. Good, drastically smaller. And what about those confusing Zolan features from HRM? The high and low frequency things. Gone. Replaced with something much clearer functionally. TRM uses two features, but they have distinct roles. There's YAF. Hey, oh, YAF great. is the model's current proposed solution, the answer it's working on. Okay, the output it's trying to generate. Right. And then there's Zeller is the latent reasoning feature. Think of it as the model's internal scratch pad. Ah, so Zeller's is like its working memory, its internal chain of thought, kept separate from the actual answer. Precisely. It elegantly explains why you need two features without resorting to complex biological stories. One holds the answer in progress, the other holds the reasoning behind it. That makes intuitive sense. Mm -hmm. And the simplification, did it help with the math problems, the fixed point stuff? Completely. They just bypassed the need for the implicit function theorem and that whole fixed point assumption. They realized the shortcut wasn't just shaky, it was actively hurting generalization. So instead of the mathematical shortcut for gradients, yeah. What did TRM do? How did it learn? It bit the bullet. It performed full backpropagation through the entire recursion, all six steps, or however many steps it took. The whole chain. No so approximations. No approximations. Just uh. propagate the learning signal all the way back through the iterative process. Yes, it takes more memory during training. But, but as the researchers put it, that memory cost was well worth its price in gold because the impact on generalization was massive. How massive? Give me numbers. On Sudoku Extreme, using the old one-step gradient approximation from HRM gave about 56% accuracy. Switching to full back propagation yep. jumped to 87.4% accuracy. Whoa. That's huge. Just from learning more accurately through the whole process. Exactly. Trading a flawed compute shortcut for learning fidelity paid off enormously. Okay, now this brings us right to the heart of the less is more thing. Yeah. Because TRM didn't just simplify, it intentionally reduced its capacity in ways that seem almost backward in today's AI world. Right. They actively fought against the instinct to just make the model bigger when faced with these hard tasks. They found more capacity often led straight to overfitting. Overfitting. Because the data sets are small. Yeah, think about it. Sudoku Extreme might only have a thousand training puzzles. Trying to train a giant network on just 1K examples, it's going to memorize, not generalize. Like trying to teach quantum physics using only nursery rhymes. <sighs> yeah, something like that. So 
Counterintuitively, they found that reducing the network depth from four layers down to just two layers actually maximized performance on Sudoku Extreme. Fewer layers work better. Yep took accuracy from about 79% up to that 87.4% peak, and it halved the parameters again. Two layers hit the sweet spot between being powerful enough and simple enough to avoid overfitting. That's incredible. Architectural intelligence winning over brute parameter count. Hmm. What else do they simplify? That inefficient ACT mechanism. They streamlined that, too. Remember, the ACT training needed two forward passes. Yeah, the inefficient part. TRM simplified the ACT objective, basically removing one component of its loss function. And guess what? It eliminated the need for that second forward pass during training. It hurt performance. Nope. Virtually no impact on generalization. Still got around 86, 87% accuracy. So they made ACT simpler and more efficient to train without a downside. Nice. And you mentioned stability. Yeah. Training on small data sets can be rough. Very volatile. So they added EA, exponential moving average, of the model's weights during training. Oh, EMA, like smoothing things out. Exactly. It helps prevent the model's performance from suddenly collapsing or diverging, which can happen easily when your data is scarce. Just a simple stabilization technique. Single, tiny two-layer network, full backprop, simplified ACT, EMA for stability. Anything else architecturally? One more interesting detail. The best type of layer wasn't always the same. It depended on the task's structure. Ah, so not one size fits all even within TRM. Right. For small fixed size grids like 9x9 Sudoku, they found an MLP mixer layer works slightly better than standard self-attention. That got them the top 87.4% score. MLP mixer instead of attention. But for tasks with larger grids, like 30x30 mazes or the ARC AGI visual puzzles, you needed the broader context capability of self-attention layers. So the core recursive structure stayed, but the layer type was adapted. Smart. Tailoring the architecture to the problem geometry. Okay, let's hit the scorecard. The results really drive this home, right? TRM gets 87.4%, remember HRM? Only 55.0%, it's not even close. Oh, massive improvement. What about Mazehard? TRM hits 85.3%, again, significantly better than HRM's 74.5%. And the big one, ARC AGI, the benchmark that stumps the giants. On ARC AGI 1, TRM achieves 44.6%, and importantly, it also beats published results from models like Gemini 2.5 Pro, which was around 37.0%. Beating Gemini Pro with 7 million parameters. And what about the really hard ARC AGI 2, the newer one? That's where it's even clearer. TRM gets 7.8% accuracy. That's nearly double HRM's 5.0% and comfortably ahead of Gemini 2.5 Pro's 4.9%. Cow, the numbers really are stark. This tiny recursive model is outperforming giants on tasks that require genuine step-by-step -step reasoning, especially with limited data. That's the core finding. So the big revelation here for us and for you listening is that for these complex reasoning puzzles where training data isn't abundant, this idea of deep recursion, mm -hmm. of iteratively refining an answer that deep supervision thing seems way more valuable than just having a massive model or these complex, maybe flawed, biologically inspired setups. Mm -hmm. Simplicity, when focused on that iterative process, leads to better generalization less really is more here. And it really is about the process. Mm -hmm. The sources mentioned they even tried experiments using tools like uh, TorchDQ, specifically designed to force the model to mathematically converge to a fixed point, like HRM originally assumed. To satisfy the old math. Yeah. But trying to force that convergence, it actually slowed down training and made the final generalization worse. Get out. So um, forcing the mathematical ideal actually hurt. It did, which strongly suggests it's not about reaching some perfect mathematical state. It's the journey of refining the answer step by step, even if it never perfectly converges, that provides the benefit. The journey, not the destination. Fascinating. It feels like the original complexity was actually masking or even hindering the power of the core recursive idea. That seems very likely. Which leads us to the big open question this research leaves us with. Okay, what's the final thought for us to chew on? Well, we've seen how simplifying deep recursion led to huge improvements. But the fundamental question is still kind of hanging there. Why does this recursive iterative approach work so much better than just using a standard feedforward network that's simply much larger and deeper? Right. If the issue with bigger standard networks is overfitting on small data. Exactly. If overfitting is the main reason the big standard models fail here, what does that imply about the fundamental interplay between, you know, network architecture, the nature of reasoning itself, and the reality of data scarcity? 
We found a better way with TRM, but we don't fully understand the underlying principle that makes recursion so powerful in these low data, high reasoning scenarios. That's the frontier. What's the fundamental relationship here? That's the question to keep pondering.